Until 1912, the United States was more rural than citified. Our grandfather's glowing memories of those distant days have bequeathed a legend, half myth, half reality, of a life many of us may think of as idyllic. Not only beautifully calm, clear and clean, but richer in the simpler virtues everyone learned and few doubted at that great and vanished institution, the one-room schoolhouse. Although it could be of any color, or none, it has been most often immortalized as the Little Red Schoolhouse. This is where they spelled out right and distinguished it from wrong without a shade of hesitation or doubt. Then if you were good, you got your picture took with the teacher. She was usually a pretty lady like this teacher. But in the instance we're leading up to, a tough rancher took over and gave the boys out of this one-room schoolhouse some lessons they'd never forget. This is a double O. This is Belle Fouche. In between is 400 miles of the meanest country in the West. And the only way we're gonna get through is if you take orders. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Now you'll show up at my place first Monday after school's out at 5 a.m. and come with grit teeth. Because, gentlemen, that's when school really begins. Where do you get 10 to 15 year olds who can drive 1,500 head of cattle across the toughest country in the West? Mark Rydell, the producer director of The Cowboys, interviewed hundreds of eager kids from all over the United States. Most had never been on a horse. Those that had didn't know how to act. Finally, he made his decisions. I'd like to. Uh give you this and see if, uh, see, if, see if they fit. Oh, that's All right. great. That's you. Thank you. Yeah. It's time for you to realize that there's going to be a lot of work involved. And the work that's going to have to be done is in acting. Now, we know that you're an expert rider. I've seen you ride. I've seen you bulldog. I've seen you do all kinds of crazy things with a horse and calves and with ropes and all that stuff. I think you're terrific. You've been doing it for some time, haven't you? Yeah. How long? Oh, all my life. All your entire life? Yeah. How long is that? Well, I started when I was about three. And yeah. now, now you what? How? I'm ten. Ten. Of the 11 boys chosen for roles in the film, six are country boys, veteran rodeo riders. The others are city kids, experienced actors, but short on knowing how to handle a horse. Before the director takes them out on location, the actors have to be taught to ride and rope, and the riders have to be taught to act. You be here every day. You work every day after school. You work for three hours each day, and on Saturday and Sunday you'll be in the saddle eight and nine hours. You're gonna have to wind up like that. And these boys, of course, you know, have been doing it for years. You can see how they move out. They're comfortable at it. They can do it now. But they can't act. Not yet. <laughs> so you'll teach them those things. Hopefully, your various skills will rub off on each other. All right, come on, boys. Bring them over. It's gonna be funny. Come on, boys. <laughs> Let's go. All right, boys. Now come on in. And it's gonna be your turn. I want you to get on the horses. The cowboy boys, come on over here with me. Give your horses to the actor boys. Will you please? We can watch them mount. Okay. Uh-huh. Very good. Very good. Excellent. Fred, it'll never work. But after a while, it does seem to be working. And it's kind of hard to tell the boys apart when they're out in real cattle country. And like kids everywhere, when they're into something really new, they go overboard, practicing, roping everything on the set that doesn't move. Now they're ready to go to the teeth-written school John Wayne was talking about, learning how to handle the back-breaking chores of a cowboy on a ranch. 
First, there's the job of roping a bulky calf. You. Yes, sir. What's your name? Hardy Phillips. Go rope one. These little calves are fast and tricky. To rope one and throw it is a match even for a real rodeo rider like 10-year-old Clay O'Brien. You'll do. Mark Rydell's got a lot on his mind. Breaking in the kids as cowboys is tough on him. But right now, he's concerned with getting the cattle drive on the trail. So he blocks out camera angles with his staff to photograph several thousand cattle, a hundred horses, and 11 cowboys on the move. In other words, you, the word's going down the line. Now you're telling Charlie, right? They push from the back, they start from the back. Start from the back. The boss and the cook, played by Roscoe Lee Brown, are ready to start the drive. Are you ready, Mr. Nightlinger? Well, I'm ready, Mr. Anderson. Let's go to Belfouche. Move them out. Move them out. Yes, sir. Move them out, Winnie. Start them, Charlie. Move them up, Bob. Move them, Jim. Care and feeding of a herd on the move is one big problem for a cattleman. The beeves need room to graze and water to drink, so they follow a trail that crosses grassy plains and running rivers. It can be tricky driving the cattle to the other bank, but the boys are good enough now to go right into the river with them, riding their horses like true cowpokes. Part of the cowboy's job on the trail is to go after a steer that gets nervous and loses its footing. Once in a while, he has to do it for another rider in trouble. There are still many miles to go and it will take all the boys have learned to handle it. It will be a time for the breaking of boys and the making of men. This is the way it was then, and this is the way it is now on the trail to Belfouche. Their names are Fats and Four Eyes, Slim, Homer, Charlie, and Bob, Weedy and Cimarron. These are the boys of the Bozeman one-room schoolhouse this tough rancher taught some lessons to. These are the cowboys 